New AI tools are coming out every day. One that's been around for a little bit longer is WriteSonic. WriteSonic builds itself as a tool for creating SEO optimized and plagiarism free content for blogs, ads, emails, and websites. And it's a little bit like Jasper, but is WriteSonic any good? And should you use it to create AI content? Well, I took out a subscription to WriteSonic and I tested it extensively. My name is Brian Collins, and in this video review, I'm gonna show you how WriteSonic works and explain if I got much value from it. Now, if you enjoyed this review of WriteSonic, hit thumbs up, and of course, if you wanna get more reviews of other AI tools, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let's dive in. As AI tools go, WriteSonic is pretty affordable. So you can take out a monthly or an annual subscription. And you can even take out a free trial if you're not ready to pony up with your credit card details. So if you take out a free trial, you can generate 10,000 words of content. Now, everything you do in WriteSonic costs words, so you won't be long going through your 10,000 allocation. So to be honest, you're gonna to need to pay $49 per month to get 300,000 words. That's what I subscribe to. Or you can get a discount of 33% if you take out an annual subscription. Now, you could go for the 100,000 word option, but you won't be long going through 100,000 words if you use it to generate a few articles. Once you take out the pro subscription, you get access to ChatGPT4, which is what it's built on top of, as well as its other additional tools. A couple of things that appeal to me are the ability to generate articles in bulk, the ability to export directly to WordPress at a click, and also the integration with Surfer, which is an SEO optimization tool, which now also has its own AI tool. Now, in comparison, Jasper has a somewhat simplified pricing structure, so you can pay $49 per month, or you can pay $39 per month if you take out an annual subscription. And of course, if you just use ChatGPT and you wanna get access to ChatGPT4, that's gonna cost you $20 per month at the time of recording this video. So I took out a monthly subscription to WriteSonic, and when you log in, this is what the dashboard looks like. It's pretty similar to Jasper. There are dozens and dozens of different templates that you can pick from. You can use it to create AI content for articles and blog posts, for ads and marketing copy, for general writing, e-commerce, social media, website copy, and other, which covers a wide range of options, including citations and a text summarizer. And if you're overwhelmed by the sheer number of templates, I know I was, you can actually just search for something instead, and that's probably an easier way to find what you need. There are also options on the left-hand side as well. So there's Botsonic, which enables you to build a type of bot for your website. So I'm not gonna to focus too much on that for the purposes of this video. There's Chatsonic, which is basically an AI chat bot, which enables you to interact with it a little bit like ChatGPT4. And there's also Photosonic, which you can use to generate uh, AI images using prompts. And there's also an option to generate content in bulk by uploading a spreadsheet. And if you click on this option here, it'll give you a template that you can populate and then upload into WriteSonic. So I've tested a number of these different features for this video, and I'm gonna cover the key ones for writers and content creators. A few moments ago, I showed you the WriteSonic interface. Well, the interface can change depending on what part of the tool you're in. So I'm currently in the citations generator, and if I click on the icon, you can see that there are options for new articles and blogs, add and marketing tools, general writing, e-commerce, social media, website copy, and other. And if I click on any of these, there are dozens of more options that I can pick from. SEO keyword generator, tone changer, make your own AI, song lyrics, real estate listing descriptions, pain agitate solutions, review responder, ADA framework, product names, analogy maker, the list goes on and on. Obviously all of this is quite helpful in that it gives you inspiration about what you can use WriteSonic for. But it can also be completely overwhelming. It's hard to know where to start. And to be honest, a lot of the time I just found myself missing this, the simple chat box that you get with ChatGPT. Sure, sometimes it's difficult to know what prompt to use, but it can be just too much when you see so many different types of options inside of your AI tool. And this was a criticism I also had for Jasper as well. Um, so I would like to see WriteSonic simplify this at some point, so somebody new to using an AI tool can figure out exactly where to start. I like a lot of these tools because they can help you paraphrase content. And that's helpful if you want to reuse it for perhaps your email or for social media, or perhaps you just want to take something that somebody else wrote, 
reword it slightly and then put in your original source or citation. So I took an extract of an article I wrote uh, about cryptocurrency, pasted it into the paraphrasing uh, feature within Write Sonic. I selected English as my language, and I should point out that Write Sonic enables you to pick from multiple different languages, but I'm just gonna focus on English. And you can also determine your content type. So I'm gonna pick Superior, which is ChatGPT4. Now suffice to say, this will consume more words. And you can also dictate the amount of outputs that you want. So I'm gonna increase this to five, and now I'm gonna click Regenerate, because I had a version I created on screen there a few moments ago. And it'll just take a few moments to paraphrase this content and give me a couple of different options. And obviously this is gonna consume some of my credits as well. Now you'll notice I'm still talking and the screen is blank. And unfortunately, this is one of the issues I encountered with Write Sonic. Compared to some of the other AI tools that I've used, I found it's quite slow and laggy. And on a number of occasions, I did have to reload and refresh my browser to get results that I could use. Write Sonic took about a minute to come up with five different outputs. Now, some of the outputs were quite similar. So at least three of the outputs started with the phrase, typically when I require funds. So not too different from what I originally wrote. And I actually had to scroll down to find one that was a little bit different, although a little bit shorter, this version here. And if I like, I can copy this to my clipboard, I can bin it, or I can go in and edit it. Now, when I say you won't be too long going through the amount of AI words you have each month, this is what I mean. So each one of these would have consumed some of my available words. Now, because I have 300,000 words at approximately $49 per month, I ha do have quite a lot. But clearly, if you're on a more budget plan, uh, then you will quickly consume your available words per month. One feature I liked in Write Sonic is its ability to take content from a live URL and resummarize it. This is quite helpful for the research process or basically if you are trying to put together an article using multiple different sources. So I've taken an article from the BBC all about uh, the US Congress and a financial crisis in the United States, pasted it into the URL section and I can then dictate what summary type I like, select my quality type and then I'm going to click create summary. And now Write Sonic will just take a few moments to analyze the article in question. And you'll see here it's come up with a network error. So this is an example of the types of issues that I did encounter with the tool. So let's try one more time. I could not get that article from the BBC to correctly work with the text summary tool. So I found a different article from The Guardian and I pasted it into Write Sonic and this one worked. Now for some reason it pulled in the picture, which I thought was a bit strange. It's also summarized the start of the article in a single paragraph. And if I want, I can copy this to my clipboard and I can bring this across to my writing app. Now I've come across these types of tools in other software, including Quillbot and in Google Bard. And my feeling is that they can be useful, but you do need to sense check the summary against the original article to make sure it's been summarized correctly. So let's have a look. The way we feed ourselves is crucial to our survival in this century. So let's go over to the start of the article. No issue is more important and none so shrouded in myth and wishful thinking. The way we feed ourselves is key to the determinant of whether we survive in this century. So arguably, this is a little bit of a clunky introduction. So I would say it's done a reasonably good job of summarizing the intent of the article in a single paragraph. Now, I'd still want to have the original source or citation to go back to if I was to refer to this in whatever I'm writing. WriteSonic also has a citation generator. Now, the citation generator is a little bit unusual. So it's not gonna create a list of references or a bibliography for your article based on sources that you've found. Instead, you're gonna paste in your live URL or your content, and Write Sonic is gonna analyze the facts or statements and then come up with some sources to back them up, which seems a little bit like putting the cart before the horse. Let me show you what I mean. So if I paste in the same article from The Guardian, and I'm gonna make sure I pick Superior to get access to ChatGPT4, and of course I can pick English. Then I'm gonna click Generate and give Write Sonic a few moments, or perhaps a few seconds, or even perhaps a few minutes to come up with some citations that I can include in the article. So Write Sonic went ahead and analyzed the article that the Guardian columnist wrote. And now it's come up with three different sources that the columnist could insert into his or their article to back up their arguments, which I thought was a little bit strange. So basically these are supposed facts uh, with the URL that I could put into the article in question. So I guess if you have an idea of what the article is about and you've already written it, but you just need a couple of additional sources, then this could be a useful tool. So let's use Write Sonic for perhaps the main reason why I took out an account with it. 
to actually write an article. So I have my topic, how to write a book. So I've written several books, so I'd have an understanding of what the process involves. And I'm pretty certain that this is the right keyword, but I'm gonna go ahead and search for keywords inside of Write Sonic and see what it comes up with. So it's come up with multiple different keywords that I can choose from, including of course, how to write a book, which makes sense. And I have the volume and cost per click. Now I would recommend that you sense check anything this comes up with with another SEA tool like Ahrefs or SEMrush. So I'm just gonna put in this keyword, click on next. And now I'm gonna see what options I can choose from. So firstly, I can determine a tone of voice. So I think creative works. I can go from first person to second person to third person. So I'm gonna go with first person. Uh, I'm gonna leave call to action blank. And I'm just gonna make sure I pick ChatGPT4 to get the best results and pick English. Now I'm gonna click regenerate ideas. So these ideas on screen are from an article that I wrote some time ago. And let's see what Write Sonic comes up with. It suggested a couple of different ideas. Unleash your inner author, the ultimate guide on how to write a book. I'd prefer if this keyword was at the start of the headline, but I could probably use that. From blank page to bestseller, mastering the art of how to write a book. I'm pretty certain I've seen that on a sales page for another writing website. Write your way to success, expert tips and tricks on how to write a book. And then it's pulled in some information about writer's block, which I thought was a bit strange. So let's go ahead and select the first one. And now it's got a couple of different outlines that I can choose from. So understanding writer's block, that's not really relevant. So I'm gonna click regenerate outline. So perhaps it was referencing an old article that I generated some time ago. As you can see, WriteSonic takes some time to come up with the outline. Now I have tested some other AI tools, including Koala, which I review on the channel, and also ChatGPT. And both are much faster at coming up with outlines and also writing the article. WriteSonic comes up with a couple of different outlines that I can choose from. The first one begins with introduction to writing a book. The second one talks about the journey to becoming an author and so on. And I can generate more outlines and I can go in and edit them. And I can also move them around in the next section, which was both helpful and confusing. The fact that I can edit them here and also in the next section. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna select the first one. And then on the left hand side, I now have options to move these sections around and to go in and edit or change them. And also to change the title for the article in question. So I would actually put this at the start of the article, if it was an SEO optimized article, and change it to unleash your inner author. Um, and I'll take out conclusion because I don't like having a conclusion in my subhead. Now I could spend a bit more time refining these based on my keyword strategy, but I'm gonna go ahead and generate the article. Right Sonic is in the process of producing my article. The first thing I liked is that it pulls in an image. Now, unfortunately I would not use this image because it has the person's social media handle, but it does have the source and I have tested this tool for other articles and found that sometimes it will pull in photos, which could be a bit of a time saver. Then it will produce the article in Markdown. I have another video on the channel where I explain how to use Markdown, but basically this makes it much easier to copy and paste the results and pull it into your site. But I wouldn't actually recommend doing that. You'd still want to edit the results and make sure they make sense to you. And the article is actually quite good. So it has my introduction, and then it has a personal or creative story in the introduction, describing how when I was a child, I was always captivated by the magical world of books and how they transport me to new realms. Maybe it's a little bit cliched, but I guess I could rework this during the editing process. Now it doesn't add any links, so I'd need to do this during the editing process as well. And it's matched up with the subheadings that I created in the outline. And obviously your H2 subheadings are important for SEO, so this is why you need to have a good SEO strategy for an article like this. And then each of the paragraphs are nicely broken up and formatted for the web. Arguably there's nothing in bold or there's no lists or bullet points, uh, but you know, I could do that myself during the editing process. And the content itself is reasonably good. It would certainly be enough for me to work with. And I could go and plug this into the citations generator to come up with some external sources if I was unsure uh, about what else I should link out to. And if I scroll all the way down, you'll see it's quite a lengthy article. So sometimes when you're using ChatGPT, you will stop at five or 600 words and you'll need to continue to reprompt it. So I could potentially use this article on my site with a small bit of editing. Now there are options to share it as a public link with another editor, download it as Microsoft Word document, PDF or HTML, and you can connect it or publish it directly to your WordPress website as well. Now, when I'm testing these AI tools, I sometimes like to check them with originality.ai. This is a new tool which will tell you if the article was written by AI or not. Now, suffice to say, I've had mixed results with originality.ai, so take this with a pinch of salt. 
I put in the US Constitution into this and it told me it was written by AI, which clearly it wasn't. But let's put in the right Sanic article and click scan now. And it'll tell me how much of this article was produced by AI bots. Unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, originality.ai has said the entire article was written by an AI bot. Sometimes when I'll put in articles written by ChatGPT4, it won't pick up everything as written by AI. So I would actually want to edit a lot of this content, putting in my own personal impressions and some context before publishing it on my site. Now, do remember originality.ai is a new tool, so you do need to take this with a pinch of salt. One fun tool WriteSonic has is Photosonic. So you can actually create AI generated images by putting in a prompt. Create me an image of a stressed out author in 1920s Paris writing a book. And if I click generate, WriteSonic is gonna come up with a couple of different options that I could put into my article if I don't want to use freely available stock or perhaps buy some imagery. So there are two good options here, a stressed out writer drinking a bottle of wine or a bottle of whiskey in the 1920s. I wanted to like WriteSonic because on the face of it, it seems like a really powerful AI tool. So you can use it to create blog posts, advertising, email copy, website copy, and it also has tools for creating images and even a bot for your website. And it's reasonably affordable. I wanted to like WriteSonic, but I found myself trying or moving to competing tools after a few months. That's simply because I firstly found WriteSonic difficult to use. The sheer amount of options and features inside of WriteSonic made it difficult for me to find what I wanted when I wanted it. And it took me a lot of clicks and tries to get a finished article. And that's despite the ability to create articles in bulk. Secondly, I found that WriteSonic was buggy and a lot of the time it seemed to crash or slow down or I would just have to start again to write an article. And thirdly, I found that WriteSonic seems to be attempting to do everything. So while it is powerful on the face of it, a lot of the time I found myself just moving back to ChatGPT4. So perhaps for a writer, it would be better to have a more specific AI tool. Are you using WriteSonic? Have you had success with it? Let me know in the comment section below this video. And if you'd like me to profile other AI videos, also let me know. And don't forget to subscribe to watch my next one.